Joining us now, a member of the FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee, Dr. Paul Offit. Dr. Offit, we are expecting an announcement on the J&J &J vaccine this week, the pause. What's your take at this point? I think if the J&J &J vaccine were the first vaccine that was available, the conversation would be different. Then the conversation would be that there is a very rare side effect, which is serious, that occurs in one in a million in a million people. On the other hand, if you take a million people who are infected with this virus, 5,000 would die. And so the conversation would be that the benefits of the vaccine dramatically and clearly outweigh its risk. But it wasn't the first vaccine. It was the third vaccine. Pfizer and Moderna vaccines preceded this, and they don't have this risk. So I think now the question is going to be, we've, we've basically put a scarlet letter on this vaccine. I think we scare people about this vaccine, even though it has certain characteristics that are advantageous. It's single dose. It's refrigerator stable for months as compared to, say, the Pfizer vaccine, which is refrigerator stable for five days, or the Moderna vaccine, refrigerator stable for one month. So then the question becomes, are there going to be people who don't get vaccinated, either because this was the only vaccine they were going to get or because they're generally scared of vaccines, in which case we may have done more harm than good in all this? Speaking of vaccine hesitancy, it is political. When you look at the number of vac the numbers of COVID cases on the rise and or vaccine hesitancy, it is in red states. What is that going to mean for the rest of us who have been vaccinated and who are ready to get back to normal? That's the that's the key question. I mean, as well, we hit the, the summer, there's going to be enough vaccine for everybody. And so then you're going to find out what percentage of the population really doesn't want to get vaccinated. Because if we don't get to 80 plus percent population immunity, either from natural infection or vaccination, then this virus is going to continue to spread. And then we're going to have to decide, is that OK? Is it okay for people, significant numbers of people, not to be vaccinated? Or are we going to have to find some way to compel them to be vaccinated? You're starting to see some evidence for that. But if you and I are vaccinated, if everyone in our family is able to be vaccinated, can we not say, go fish to those who don't want to get vaccinated? If you get sick, that's your own free will. The problem is, is that when you make a decision not to vaccinate yourself, you're not only making a decision for yourself, you're making a decision for everyone else with whom you come in contact. So the question is then, is it your inalienable right as an American citizen to catch and transmit a potentially fatal infection, especially one that continues to mutate, create variants, some of these variants of which may become completely resistant to immunization or to immunity induced by natural infection or immunization? We need to stop the spread of this virus because the, as the degree to which it continues to reproduce itself is the degree to which it continues to have variants. And the degree to which we don't get a, a significant percentage of the population immunized is the degree to which we're all at risk then do we have to do something to actually force people to comply? Because just encouraging them, especially when you consider the amount of disinformation out there and how politicized this has become, just saying, come on, guys, let's do it. It's not going to make a difference. I think you're already starting to see that in the private sector. Uh, Forty schools now have said, if you want to come back to school and have on-site learning, then you have to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I think that you're starting to see it happening already, restaurants, bars, I, I think that the, it's the private sector that will step forward here, and that's going to be where the rubber beats the road as we move into late summer, because we'll know how well we do by next winter. This is basically a winter virus. I mean, the, the, the number of deaths are now dramatically coming down between the weather, between natural immunity from infection, between the vaccine. I think this is going to be we're going to be good over the summer. And then we'll see how well we've done when next winter hits. If we have we've done well, if we get more than 80 percent population immunity, then we'll just have a bump next summer. If not, we're going to have a sur I'm sorry, next winter. If not, then we're going to have a surge next winter. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.